Cherry Blossom Festival. All right, that was right up there with the old cowboy thing, mm -hmm. buddy. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Uh, I'm, I'm here with South Dakota Republican Christine Ohm, but it's saying, uh, Congresswoman, mm -hmm. that you guys are going to spoil the Cherry Blossom Festival. I'm not as concerned about the Cherry Blossom Festival as I am about our, mili our military military men and women I'm very concerned with. So not I, the Cherry Blossom. Well, not as much as our military men and women that are overseas defending our freedoms. So, uh, you know, cherry I think Blossoms take a back seat. You know, this is truly a perfect opportunity for us to find out what people's priorities are. You know, so I think that uh, you see on the House Republican side, we're trying to take care of our military and put our country back on a better path. So okay. that's uh, our priority. Just to put this in perspective, for those who just caught up, the Senate Majority Leader was talking about the government shutting down. You wouldn't have a cherry blossom festival. We're told they'll have it one way or the other. And we'll be here live tomorrow when they do. So mm -hmm. rest mm -hmm. assured. Yeah. Uh, is it your sense that there is a division? If it, No matter what Republicans agree to, Tea parties, some of the more conservative members are going to say, hey, you sold out. Mm -hmm. I think there is that feeling among a certain group within the conference. I, my office is certainly hearing that. We're hearing really? feedback. What are they telling you? Stick uh, to a are, number? People are calling in. They're saying stick to it, that it's really important. Don't compromise because we really, it is important for our future. I mean, you told us in the last election that it was important. Uh, and so now this is the time to really, so really hold our So how would you ground. sell to your yeah. constituents what could be a 30 eight billion dollar number and not the 61 mm -hmm. billion dollar number. well i've been telling them that's why we're having this fight we're absolutely having this discussion because we want those cuts to be as large as possible because even if we got the 61 or what we had in hr1 uh it's two percent of our federal budget but that's you won't get that you won't, we won't get that, get that. we get won't get 38 that. billion maybe yeah. tops right and absolutely and that's going to lay in the lap of the senate democrats because they were the ones who absolutely were not even a part of this conversation but when i get a bill in front of me I'm going to judge that bill by its merits. So it's really hard for me to look at a bill that's sitting there, seeing that it's cutting spending, and if there's not things in there that I disagree with, you know, that's how I'm going to judge my vote. So, uh, but I'm fighting. I'm fighting so for those So is it cuts. fair to say, Congresswoman, your constituents are of a mindset better to shut the government down and sell out on these principles? I think there's a portion of them. I don't know if it's the, majority the consensus. Of your I don't know if it's the majority because, you know, there's a lot of people in South Dakota and I certainly haven't heard from them all. Right. But there is a portion of them that would like to see us really hold our ground on this. And that's why you see this, uh, us continue to press through even when the Senate is not taking any action and our president has been AWOL. Well, how did this Planned Parenthood thing suddenly mm -hmm. become an issue? Yeah. From what I understand, it was in the original resolution. Mm -hmm. It was. Months ago. Yep. So how did it become such an issue? Because the Democrats saw the fact that the American people realized they're responsible for this problem, and so they needed a new message. They needed a new thing. They could stand up in front of the TV cameras and say, well, let's see how we can message this to damage the Republicans, and it's not working. People realize that we're arguing over spending cuts. It's not over the policy. There is policy addressed. Many of those have been decided, but we're fighting over the spending cuts, recognizing that we have to do that. But in the end, then the focus is on the debt ceiling. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing this all over again. Yeah. You know, how are they really, how, we're going to have to get to that point where we have to vote on that debt ceiling. Uh, how are they going to sit here and fight so hard not to cut spending? They're fighting to spend more money and then come back and raise that debt ceiling. I don't, I don't know how the Democrats over in the Senate can live with that. So, so we're right. going to have to reform this place, and it's going to be a battle, but, but we're up to the game. We're up to the job. All right. And you're up to, yep. hopefully you're up to the late night. Yes, it's going we to be are. Very late yeah. Night. yeah, we're pretty yeah. resilient. So, Congresswoman, yeah. thank yeah. you very, very thank much. You. All right, uh, a number of uh, top people were briefed on how these negotiations were going, including all the potential presidential candidates. Who do you think was among them? And